You know, at my grandfather's funeral, they wouldn't let me speak. We had, like, th this agreement where, you know, they would just let my brother speak for all of us so that people couldn't say their feelings about their grandfather. And, and my grandfather was a Zionist. He supported Israel. That's what he was all about. That's what he believed in. And my brother, my brother is what I would say the kind of person that doesn't really tell the truth. He likes to just get along. And that's what he's an expert in. He's an expert in just saying stuff that doesn't cause a reaction. And as my cousin John was sitting down during the funeral, he mentioned about the oppression of the Palestinians. And I could just see the ghost of my grandfather just getting up out of his coffin and saying, What are you doing at my funeral? What are you doing? Now, I don't think my grandfather would have hated John. I, John was always the guy who was afraid to, to, to offend anyone. He was always the guy like, at, at a wedding that would lecture me for attempting to put balloons on people's seats because I thought it was funny to hear a pop. What joy could a young boy have? Well, politically correct John Sheldon was always one to ruin and be a wet blanket. And here he was in the aisle at my grandfather's funeral talking about the oppression of Palestinians. A man whose grandfather wrote off his father because he, his father converted to Judaism. He came, his, his father, that's another story. At any rate, John is John. I mean, he was a guy that was uncomfortable with me during high school, wouldn't hang out with me. And it's very obvious that he's afraid of everything. He's afraid to offend everybody. Now, I'm not really interested in putting down my cousin because I know he's had a, you know, he's had it hard too. You know, he struggled. He didn't, you know, he had a rock career and his band. And now he's like, I don't know, a producer for the, Polish brothers or something in Hollywood and that's great for John that's not but then I, I look at all the Jewish organizations and they're just like John Sheldon they're just like my brother they're afraid they're, they're given a platform to speak and they won't speak the UJA and Daroff and are, are, are enabling and uh, J Street and they're not just enabling J Street if you go on friend feed and you look at, like, B'nai Brith's feed, it, it's got the J Street Twitter account in their friend feed account. They're furthering the causes of anti-Semitism. And, oh, we can't even call it anti-Semitism anymore. We can't call it that. We can't. We have to call it something else. So, let's go back to the German word, Judenhaus, right? They're furthering that cause. And it's depressing. And then, when you say anything, they get their Orthodox members to come out. And guess what? Over Passover, I was using the computer and I was on the internet. Why? Because I, was, I admin all these Jewish groups and we get attacked by whatever. Not just on the Jewish groups, on my own profile. And the, the, these Palestinian sympathizers know to attack during the Sabbath or know to attack during the Jewish holidays. That's the way they attacked on during Yom Kippur. And if you go out and you defend yourself online, when you're not supposed to be online according to Jewish ritualists, which are quite medieval, then you get attacked by these Jewish groups, which are really enabling the UJA and really enabling Daroff. People that, well, oh yes, we do hang out with the Jewish Internet Defense Force, but we also hang out with the UJA. The UJA, the ADL, all of these organizations make millions of dollars and they enable Islamic extremism. They work 
with, with care. They, they worked with the Council of American Islamic Relations. I think that's what it stands for. They, they enable sects of the Islamic Brotherhood. These are the Jewish organizations that your money is going to. You don't support people that are outspoken about Judaism today because we're online and we're fighting for your cause during the Sabbath. We're online and fighting for your cause during Passover. We're fighting for you and you give us grief because we have to sometimes not follow the precedent and the rules. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating to, 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 be, to be disciplined by somebody who, you know, was probably tripping on acid in the 60s. These hippies are the problem. They enable and they turn the other cheek and they allow violence and then they turn around to their own community and what they do, what they do is they say, oh, you're not wearing a kippah. No, I don't wear a kippah. You know why? Because that's a tradition. It's a fashion from the Middle Ages. It's, it, 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 it's Jews copying the Catholic Church. That's where it's from. And the Catholic Church, yes, they were copying the priests in Israel, but the priests in Israel were thrown out of power by the Hasmoneans. And they were thrown out of power by the Hasmoneans because they were corrupt. We don't need to mimic. We don't need to mimic the tra the, the, a tradition of one small part of Judaism and, and then I mean, when I was growing up, they would bully us and make us pay a dollar every time we forgot our friggin' kippah. I will never wear a kippah. There's nothing humble to God about wearing a kippah when you make us pay a dollar because we forget about it. And then you pick on us because we're going online because we're defending Jews during the Sabbath. What is wrong with you, UGA? What is wrong with you, Chabad? What is wrong with the Jewish organizations? You're not Helping people that are helping Jews. You're hurting us. Let me tell you a story. My grandfather was Moses Sivitz of Pittsburgh. My great-grandfather was Moses... Great-great-grandfather, sorry. Way back, I'm talking 1904, was Moses Sivitz. He was an Orthodox rabbi in Pittsburgh. And he wrote his grandson out. He, he rejected him. He gave him this... made the entire Jewish community give my great-grandfather the silent treatment because he was studying and doing chemistry during the Sabbath, which allowed him to become the, uh, to be in the first class of Carnegie Mellon, or what was then Carnegie Tech. Think about it. The head Orthodox rabbi rejected his son because he was studying chemistry, and he was doing research and radioactive isotopes during the Sabbath in 1904. The research in radioactive isotopes led to nuclear technology. Without nuclear technology, there would be no Israel! If my great-grandfather was not doing research during the Sabbath in 1904, there would be no Israel! None! None! You hypocrites!